everybody. Today we are going to talk about how we test your middle ear system with emittance testing. You did this. <laughs> hey, I'm Dr. Michael Squires. And I'm Dr. Carly Squires. This is Dr. Squire Squared. This is a channel where we have candid and casual conversations about anything and everything audiology. And if you're not sure what audiology is, just make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on this series and you're going to learn a lot about it. All right, so we're at part two of our series talking about all the different tests that you may um, have if you go to an audiologist's office. Last time we talked about the basic hearing test. Today we're going to talk about a portion of that that you may have done in the same appointment, but mm -hmm. this is actually testing something a little bit different, but um, these results are meant to complement and support what we do in that basic audiological assessment or that basic hearing test. And this is, we're gonna talk about the middle ear system. We're gonna talk about what that is, what we're looking for, all that good stuff and tell you what to expect. Yep, so the middle ear system is gonna be made up of the eardrum, the three little bones in the middle ear that we all learn about in grade school, mm -hmm. um, and how that's all interconnected with the auditory system. Right. So the first part of the testing that we would do to test the middle ear system is called tympanometry. Right, and a lot of people refer to that, or maybe I just do um, to my patients, it's like a pressure test, because right. essentially what's happening is we're sticking a little, just a little soft piece right here in your ear, and we're, we have to obtain a seal. Um, so yeah. you are gonna feel and, and, and kind of hear some different pressurized sounds, some humming. Um, we're gonna create that seal, and then the great part about this is you don't have to do anything. You can just sit there. Yeah, the reason yeah. the seal is so important, um, admittance is, is done using a probe tube measure, mm -hmm. which means that we're going to get a seal, mm -hmm. and the, the machine that we're using is gonna put a tone. For adults, typically it's 226 hertz. We're gonna put a tone into the ear canal. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna adjust the pressure of the ear canal, which gives us an idea of how well that eardrum is moving. Mm -hmm. So it lets us know, is there any wax uh, that's gonna be in the way of testing? Generally, we can see that. Um, a good audiologist can see that with an otoscope and, and make that judgment call. But it also lets us know, is there any? Is there a potential for fluid behind the eardrum, or is there a hole in the mm -hmm. eardrum? You know, we're looking at all of these different things to make sure what we know to look for on the hearing test. Like Carly said, mm -hmm. kind of gives us um, that little bit of, of support, uh, complements what we're doing with the hearing test. Right, and typically we we do this right before we do the the hearing test because this gives us a lot of information as to what we're going to find on that hearing test. It lets us know how sound is being conducted up through your system so that we know um, you know, what those results should look like right. um, when we do the hearing test. The second part of that um, testing, which is also gonna be very dependent on that seal mm -hmm. and the results of tympanometry, mm -hmm. is called acoustic reflex testing. The acoustic reflex is a chain of reactions throughout the auditory system in response to a loud sound. We don't really know why we have an acoustic reflex. Um, it's, sometimes it's thought to be like a vestigial response, mm -hmm. something that's kind of left over from when we were cave people, I suppose. But we can use it to find out how that auditory system is transmitting sound. So the acoustic reflex works in two different ways. Um, first, we call it ipsilateral. The reflex, if we're testing the right ear, we can also measure the reflex on the right ear. Mm -hmm. So we put loud sound, uh, a, a loud beep into the right ear, and then we measure a little muscle reflex from the bones that, are, uh, that we're testing in the middle ear mm -hmm. system. But there's also a second uh, part to that. It's called the contralateral response. So we can also put the loud sound in the right ear and measure the muscle response on the left ear mm -hmm. and vice versa. So we get a nice cross picture mm -hmm. of what's happening um, across the brainstem and how the brainstem is communicating between the two systems. Right. So it gives us a really beautiful picture of what we can expect um, with that transmission of sound. Yeah, and again, it's all about patterns. So the the tympanometry, the acoustic reflexes, all of that are going to show us different patterns that again, complement our test results that we're getting on other tests so that we can have a big picture about what's going on throughout your entire auditory system. Right. And then the very last uh, thing that we may or may not do as part of this assessment is what we call reflex decay, acoustic reflex decay or tone decay. And basically what we're doing is 
playing a sustained sound into the ear. It has to be at a certain level, so it might feel a little bit loud. Mm -hmm. But what we're looking for is the auditory system to hold on to that reflex. There are some situations like acoustic neuromas or small tumors mm -hmm. that can grow um, uh, you know, between the, the uh, ear and the brainstem that can keep that reflex from happening or from maintaining. That is called decay. So if, you, uh, if we see that the reflex is uh, maintained, then it looks like a healthy system. If we see that that reflex starts and then slowly releases, then we can mark that as a positive um, for tone decay, which is, again, just a support to what we're gonna find on the actual hearing assessment. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned this kind of off camera. These are all parts to a larger um, a puzzle, if you will. Mm -hmm. So these are all little puzzle pieces that we use to make a bigger picture. These tests are not really going to be done in isolation mm -hmm. with a lot of validity. Right. They all kind of support one another. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk then, um, as a summary, kind of what the what the patient's going to expect. So patient's going to be walked in. Um, sometimes this is done in a separate room. Sometimes it's done in the sound booth prior to the hearing test, mm -hmm. but like Carly said, you're, there's a little probe tube that's gonna go into the ear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll have one in both ears. You don't have to do a thing, you just sit and relax. You're gonna feel maybe a little bit of pressure. You're gonna hear some beeping sounds. Mm -hmm. um, think of it like going over a, a, a mountain like or a like, yeah, yeah, or maybe like going up in an airplane or something like that. Yep. But ultimately, this is one of the, for the patient, this mm -hmm. is one of the easiest tests that you have to do. Mm -hmm. There's a couple tests where we have you sleep during the test. That's probably the easiest, <laughs> but aside from that, this is all hands off for the patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once we complete that testing, and again, all of the other testing that we're doing in this battery that we're looking at, um, we'll go over results. But in specific, um, with tympanometry especially, that gives us a lot of diagnostic information, especially yeah. from physician referrals if they're suspecting something like an ear infection or fluid, uh, a perforation or a hole in the eardrum, those types of things. We're able to see that. Um, and a lot of times, um, you know, just with looking in the ear, it's sometimes difficult to tell if there right. actually is fluid, or even sometimes it's hard to tell if there's a perforation. Usually you can see that, but there are times when you cannot. And so tympanometry is super important because it gives us black and white information as to what's going on um, beyond what we can actually visibly see with an otoscope. Right, we lean pretty heavily on tympanometry to mm -hmm. give us um, kind of the backbone of the remaining tests. Mm -hmm. It kind of uh, sets the stage, if you will, for what we can expect on the other tests. If there's fluid in the ear, we expect a certain type of mm -hmm. um, deficit on the hearing test uh, or discrepancy perhaps. If there's you know, a lot of negative pressure, we can also take a look at it from that angle as well. As far as acoustic reflex <laughs> testing results go, um, as Michael just said off camera, this is, um, something that we don't typically hang our hat on in individual form uh, with this one test. We really truly need the acoustic reflexes in conjunction with other testing. It's not a standalone. This is something that we take into consideration based off everything else that we've tested in that appointment. Yeah, so we don't always go over that with patients. Right. We hope that you have enjoyed this uh, second part of our series about emittance or middle ear system testing. Um, this is something that is probably going to be completed at the same time as what we talked about in the first series, mm -hmm. which was a standard hearing assessment. Um, if you have any questions, shoot us an email at info at hearwv.com. Give us a call at the office, 304-428-2403, or uh, private message us or leave us a comment here on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so that you can keep up with our new content as we continue to talk about some of these tests mm -hmm. that are um, incredibly important for us to assess your hearing system. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. See ya.